They're Chinese. Uh, Most. Two, yeah. Yeah. Five. So yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking the Chinese students will want to go for free Chinese food, right? I know I would go if there was free Irish food. So, well, just free food. <laughs> Okay. Free and delicious. Free and delicious. And cheap. It's a good combination. Last time we pizza was too big. No, the pizza was great. Too large. No, it's great. I loved it. Large, larger than my own. This is very good as well. Some are smaller. Yeah. So. The January stomachs are smaller than the September stomachs, is that what you're saying? No, that's the true, yeah. Yes, okay. Peter, it's four. It did, it did. Uh, big stomach. Yes, I know. Yes, yes. He's a hungry boy. Right. What function is odd? Give an example of an odd function. What, what might that be? Oh my god. Huh? I just said it. Odd function? Remember one? Uh, it's like not equal to zero or something. Oh, dude. Yes, good, linear. And they said odd and periodic. Sine x. Okay. Uh, my equation is missing. Karen, can you read the equation out? Oh. Calm down, it's just a, a Pokemon trying to come in. Uh, odd functions are ones that are like this. F x f minus x equals minus f x. So examples will be like sine or um, something like um, a x uh, or a x cubed. These are odd functions. Do you remember doing this? So I didn't do this Okay. Just, so just, uh, periodic yeah. yeah. Right, what's next? Can you read the equation, um, Sohi, please? So the equation yeah. mo modulus. 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 3x minus 7 <coughs> equal 5. Yeah. Equal 5. 5. Do you remember how to solve this? Okay. Very good. Square both sides. 9x squared minus 42x plus 49 equals 25. 9x squared minus 42x plus 24 equals 0. Cut off x squared x4. X minus 4 and 3x minus 2. So x equals 4 or 2 over 3. Can I say again? Is it Continue. Well, what is even? Uh, Cos x squared x power 4 even. Odd would be like sine x x cubed. Yes, indeed. Right, what's next? There's a rock there. Yes, yeah, missing. But you didn't solve it. What are you talking about? I just did. Oh, What's the next part? Is it B? No. Part 3. Wait, the, part 3. What's the next? What's the next? What's the next? Figure out. Uh, No, no, they're not asking me to do anything, it's just a picture. It's for the next... What the heck is this doing here? They don't ask me to do anything with it. Oh, for the part three. <laughs> so in part three, they asked me to draw this. 
So what happens when I put the half there? What happens? More. No. Longer. Yes. It expands. So the graph now goes like this. This is now 4a, 0. This is now 2a, minus a. Okay. B. Gx equals x plus 1 cubed. The num well, the way it works is when you have um, a x here, it contracts it. So, for example, if you have two x, what you do is you divide it by two, contracts. But if you have a half x, when you divide by a half, that's multiplying by two. Next, here we're told that the range is um, 0 to infinity. So if I draw this really quickly, here is the root at minus 1, and the graph looks like this. So do you remember what range is? Yes. What is it? It's the x, that means the y value. It's the y values. So the y values are positive. And what's the domain? It's the x values, so the x values must be from minus 1 to infinity. So that's the domain. That's the answer to that. Oh, you could just give this answer if you could see it, but I needed to draw the graph to help me see it. Uh, because it's only one mark. Oh. Right, is GX 1, 2, 1? What do you think? Is it 1 to 1? Uh, yeah. It is, but only for the part in the question which is from here to here. So for every X value, you always get a different Y value. Oh, because in the question they said the range is this, which means the domain is this, which means we're only looking at this part. How can we the yeah, the next question, how can we give the reason? So, there's a couple of ways to do it, but I think the easiest way to do it is to calculate the derivative. So the derivative here is 3x plus 1 squared. Yes? Um, well, actually, the funny thing is, even if we don't care about the minus 1, it's still 1 to 1, because when I go here, I get... I, I always get a different y value for all my x values. They're, they're always different y's for different x's. So actually it doesn't matter about the minus one thing. Anyway, the derivative here is 3x plus 1 squared, which is always positive, which means it's always increasing. That's one reason it's 1 to 1. Because if the graph is always increasing, it means you always get different values. That's one way to show it. And because the question is only two marks, I think this is the best way to show it. Yeah? Right.
domain range. So I use G to go from domain to range. How do I go from range to domain? G inverse. So they want to know G inverse X equals 7. Yeah. Um, so I mean you can you could change that into x e how could I cancel the g inverse here uh, change it to y. no there's an easy way to do this to solve this how do you cancel sine inverse uh, if I had like y e if I had 4 equals one Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's all just relax for a second. If I have sine inverse x equals some number k, and I want to cancel the sine inverse, how can I do that? Sine. I use sine. If I want to cancel the g inverse, I use g. Because g and g inverse cancel. So I have my answer. My answer is x equals g7 which will equal 8 cubed. What do you mean into the GX? No, no, don't be sh no, 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 don't be shy. You can tell me. Are you sure? Sometimes I'm wrong. Inverse. Yeah. In the inverse function. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Put 7. You would put the 7 in for our x. Yeah, and that's what I did here. That's how I got this. I got 7 plus 1 cubed. This 8 cubed. You have x plus 1 cubed, and you're saying put the x equal 7. Correct, that's the answer, yeah. Okay. Continue. Yeah. My goodness, will you concentrate? Thank you. Drink some little bird coffee and concentrate. Right, C1. Prove that secant 4 theta equals secant squared theta 1 plus tan squared theta. Now which way do you want to prove this one? You can start at the left, start at the right. Left. No, right, right. I want to try right. But this proof is really easy. It's only two marks. Look. You can say sec, sec squared theta times sec squared theta equals sec squared theta 1 plus tan squared theta. What did I do? All I did was on the left was I changed it into that. Now what can I do? I can cancel. Cancel this. And then you're left with sec squared theta equals 1 plus tan squared theta. And this is true. I think this is in the formula book even. So that's the end of the proof. The proof here is only two marks, so it should be short. Not true? Where's true? Oh, not true? Equivalent. Oh, yeah, 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 it's okay. 
I should really write three, but it doesn't matter. It's okay. You can write two. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, it's okay. Right, next. We want to calculate this. which means we want to calculate this. Any bright ideas? By parts? Maybe. Maybe a substitution. Do you have your formula book? Yes. I think there'll be a useful formula in the book. Now this question is difficult because you don't know what to make u equal to. <laughs> so I just looked at the formula book and I'm going, I should make u equal to tan. I'm like, oh, yeah, it says that. Thank you. So here, you're right. Yes, we should make u equal to tan. And this is why you read the question twice. Yes. Here, I'll give this back to you now. That was stupid. <laughs> right. du d theta equals sec squared theta. So that means d theta equals du over sec squared theta. So this becomes 0 pi over 4 sec squared theta 1 plus u squared du over sec squared theta. Now that's great. Why is that great? They cancel. So you're left with integrate 0 pi over 4 1 plus u squared du, which equals um, u plus a third u cubed, 0 pi over 4. But what does u equal? We said u is tan theta. So it's tan theta plus 1 third tan cubed theta pi over 4 and 0, which will equal 4 over 3. So yes, if you know what the U is, it's much easier to do. Okay, continue. Sorry. So he? Yeah. Okay, Harim. Yeah. Give me B5. Why not you read that earlier? Oh, that was physics. Great, give me B5. Um, L1 has the equation of R equals 11 I and A. Say that again. L1 has the equation R, R equals. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. R equals 11 I minus A day. Ah, the vector. 11 I. One A. second, sorry. 11 I. Minus 8j plus lambda minus 7k. Great. Plus lambda. Plus lambda. 2i. 2i. Minus 8. Yeah. Minus 3k. Great. Where lambda is the. Scalar, blah, 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 yeah. 
Is that A part one? Yes, and find the point of intersection. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So do you, um, the first thing I'll do is I'll just change L1 like this. 11 plus 2 lambda minus 8 minus lambda minus 7 minus 3 lambda. And L2, I'll change it to like this. 6 plus 3 mu, minus 5 minus mu, mu 3 minus 2 mu. These are my two vector lines. How do you show two vector lines meet? How can you find where they meet? Not plus them. Equal them. Make them equal. So you get 11 plus 2 lambda equals 6 plus 3 mu, minus 8 minus lambda equals minus 5 minus mu, minus 7 minus 3 lambda equals 3 minus 2 mu. I think I will multiply this one by 2. No. Well, we can check. 11 plus 2 lambda equals 6 plus 3 mu, minus 16 minus 2 lambda equals minus 10 minus 2 mu. When you add them together, 11 minus 16 is minus 5, 6 minus 10 is minus 4, 3 mu minus 2 mu is mu, so I got mu equals minus 1. If I put that back in there, 5 minus minus 1 is 6, plus 8 is four, uh, minus 14 is what I got for lambda, which feels too big, but we'll check. No, it's wrong. I made a mistake somewhere. Maybe it's with my lambda. Mu is minus 1. Oh, it's minus 5. Minus 5, minus, minus 1. Plus 8. I got minus 4 for lambda. Then we take these two answers and put them back in to get our L1, L2, where they meet. So I'll get L1 and then L2. Okay, so minus 1. So 6 minus 3 is 3. Minus 5 minus minus 1 is minus 4. 3 minus minus 2 is 5. That's actually L2. This is L1. 11 minus 8 is 3. Minus 8 plus 4 is minus 4. Minus 7 plus 12 5. Yep, they're the same. So the answer is they meet at 3, minus 4, and 5. Okay. So he, what's the next part? Find the acute angle, Find the angle between the lines. Is this? Yes. Yeah, great. Okay. So do you remember the formula for the angle? It's cos theta equals R1 dot R2 over magnitude R1, magnitude R2. Do you remember this formula? No? Have you seen it? Are you sure? Are you sure? It's not in my mind. Okay. Have you done dot? Dot in Yeah. Now, for this one, when you want to find the angle between the two lines, you use this formula. What you use for R1 and R2 are the numbers in front of lambda. So R1 is 2 minus 1 minus 3, and R2 is 3 minus 1 minus 2. So R1, 
you use 2 minus 1 minus 3 and R2 you use 3 minus 1 minus 2. Yeah, minus my two minus one minus three. Oh. Was that plus three? Or was it a minus? Oh, it was a minus, thank you. Minus three. Minus one minus two. Okay, dot minus nine plus one plus six over magnitude fourteen magnitude fourteen. So cos theta equals minus one over seven. Do they want the acute angle? Theta equals eighty one point eight degrees. You multiply them together, two by three, one by one, three by two, and add them up. Two by three. Oh my goodness, two by three is six. Retreat. Minus six plus one plus six over root fourteen root fourteen. So cos theta equals one over fourteen. That's better, I guess. Theta equals eighty five point nine degrees. Wait. Isn't that the same amount? No, I got one over seven last time. Okay. Uh, what? When you get the bottom of the game. Magnitude. You know this from physics. Square Pythagoras. Square root, square, square, square. Square root, square, square, square. Yeah. You know what that is? Two, one, three. Three, one, two. What? What? You just tell me it was minus 3. Mm -hmm. It's not minus 3, this number here. That's a plus 3. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Oh yeah, it is a plus 3. <laughs> <laughs> not again. Alright. Plus 3. So that makes that a plus. So that's next. 13 over 14. The third answer. I don't care if it's wrong. I'm, I'm going to the next question. 21.8 degrees. Right, Sophie, what's next? Shows that point B 5 minus 5, 2. 5 minus 5, 2. Right. So you want to show that 5 minus 5, 2 is on L1. And L1 is 11 plus 2 lambda, minus 8 minus lambda, and minus 7 minus 3 lambda. Is that right? Can you please check? I don't want another mistake. Is that what I said for L1? So to show that a point is on the line, all you need to do is find the lambda to make the point. So can anybody see what lambda I need to use here? I think I can see it. I'll give you a hint. Look at the middle one. It's the easiest one. Lambda uh, equals three. Uh, minus 3. That's it. How many marks is that? Two. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Part four? You're given the point C 15 point, um, 15 minus 8 minus 3 lies on the line L2. Okay, so this is on L2 now, right? Yeah? And you find the area of triangle ABC. Ah, okay. Oh, sorry, this isn't P, it's B. Right, okay, so if we draw a very quick picture.
In the very first part, we were to find where the two points meet. What was that point called? What was that point actually? It was um, my answer. What was it? Mm. Yeah. Where do the lines meet? It was the first answer. It was uh, 3 minus 4, 5. 3 minus 4, 5. Is that called A, is it? Yeah. And then we said B was on L1, which was 5 minus 5 and 2. And then we said C was on the other line, 15 minus 8 minus 3. And uh, you said they want the angle, which angle? ABC? Or B, what was the, the area. Oh, the area, okay. And we know this angle is 21.8. Twenty one point eight degrees. Who has any ideas on how to find this uh, angle? Oh sorry, not the angle, the area. Yeah, well you can say that the area is a half A B sine C. Now do we have the angle? We do. What are we missing? This length and this length. So if this is B and this is C, what we need to do is get AB and then we need to get AC. Do you remember how to get AB? Yes, square root. No. The vector AB. AB is... AB is AC. No. No. Minus. No. AB is B minus A. B minus A. You remember this rule? Triangle rule? <coughs> Anyways, A B is B minus A. That's the triangle rule. I didn't teach you vectors. I don't know what you call things or how you did them. I just know what to do. So A B is B minus A. So five minus three is two. Minus five minus minus four is minus one. Two minus five is minus three. A C is C minus A, which is twelve minus 4, minus 8. Now we can get the magnitude. This is square root 14 and this is square root a big number. Square root 224. Now we can put them in to get our answer. You don't think you did that formula? Are you sure? You've not done this formula before. A B vector A B equals vector B minus vector A. Why is it not B A minus B? Oh my. Are you sure? Do you have your vector questions? Did do you use a workbook or just pages each week? Or have you got the vector ones? Have a look. The answer is 10.4. This is new. So to get distance minus and the magnitude. To get the distance, yeah. yeah. Because I'm so heat, what I'm doing is maybe everybody can just look for one one moment. Here is A, that's vector A, okay? Here is B, that's vector B. If I want vector AB, I can use this formula. AB is B minus A. So this is vector AB. If I calculate the magnitude, then I've got the distance from A to B. You make me so tired. If I have a vector x, y, z, the magnitude is square root x squared, y squared, z squared. What? Never mind. 
No, 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 no. I wasn't asking for the magnitude. I was asking for vector AB. You were giving me the answer for something I wasn't asking for. Right. Is there more to this question? That's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, is there another part or is that the end? B part. Oh, B part. Oh, goodness. Right. What's the B part? Go ahead, Grace. Yeah. Oh, it's a picture, is it? Let me see the beautiful picture. Give me the picture! Ah. Right. Blah A. Not A. B. Not B. B. Not B. A quarter. 2q, 3q, p, or, or plus 5 over 8. Mm. What's p, q, or? This is actually quite nice. I can, we can see what the p is straight away. Everybody please, what's the p? 3 over 4. Also, if I look here, you know that 5q must equal 1. Yeah. So what does q equal then? 1 over 5. And if you look here, you get 2 or plus 5 over 8 must equal 1. So that means 2 or must equal 3 over 8. So then you get or equals 3 over 16. How many marks is that, Sophie? <coughs> ah, okay. And Grace, read the last part, please. Oh, sorry, do you have that, Sophie? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. A margin? Yes. Yes. Margin of. Sacks? S-A-C-K-S bags. The person who wrote this exam, like I said, he's older than me, so his words are a little different. Um, go ahead. Oh, nice. Yeah. Standard deviation. Uh huh. A sample of n as in taking a as random, find the maximum value of n is in 95% confidence interval is to be at least zero point four to the minus. Uh huh. So what they want is they want um if you remember from your confidence interval, it's the average plus or minus. 1.96 standard deviations over square root n. You remember that? So what they're saying in the question is they want this part here to be, uh, sorry, what did you say, Grace? 0 0.4, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So they want you to solve this. 1.96 sigma over root n equals 0 0.4. So 1.96 times 0 0.6 over root n equals 0 0.4. So you get n equals 8.64. Now, you have to read his words very carefully. Um, so he, can you just give me his, a question at the end? He said, find n if, or what exactly did he say? Find the maximum value of n if the 95% confidence interval is to be at least 0.4 kilogram. At least 0 0.4. So we have to choose, do we choose 8 or 9? So the question is, 
if I choose 8, I'm making this smaller, yes? If I make the end smaller, what happens to the uh, value here? It gets bigger. Now, if I, make, if I go to 9, I'm making it bigger. So what happens here? Smaller. Now, he says at least 0 0.4. So, it's okay if it goes bigger, yeah. So, bigger means I should go 8. Okay, I wonder if he did that right. Something. You know the way. You know Spider Man, don't you? Spider Man has spider senses. My spider senses are telling me maybe his answer is nine. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Wait, I was wrong, or I was wrong to think he was wrong. Yes. Why do you think that means I was wrong? Maybe they were wrong. Anyway, the answer should be 8 because he did clearly say at least. So let's see if it is 8. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is so not close. Please tell me, did I write any of my numbers wrong? It is 0 0.6, yes? The standard deviation is 0 0.6? Yes. <laughs> How embarrassing. 1.96 times 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.4. My God. Look up, please. Let's have a look at the answer. I am doing this one. Realize this. Uh, no, I'm so stupid. I misread because my English is so bad. Um, so bad. Find the maximum value of n if the constant interval is to be at least 0 0.4 kilograms wide. 0 0.4 kilograms wide. Look, that's my mistake. He wasn't saying, or I misunderstood, I thought it was 0 0.4, 0 0.4. But he was saying that the total width is 0 0.4. So how much is each side? 0 0.2. Do you understand what my mistake was? Great. Do you understand what my mistake was? Look, if I said the constant interval was... 9 um, to 11, that's like 10 plus or minus 1. He says it was the width. That's the difference between this and this. So when he said 0 0.4, I thought he meant average plus or minus 0 0.4. What he was saying is that from here to here is 0 0.4. So that means this was 0.2 and 0.2. In other words, I forgot I didn't divide by 2. So I should divide by 2 here. So this should have been over 2. So let's fix that.
So now we get n equals 34.57. Do I round up or round down? Round down. Round down. Oh, the huge change. Now let's see if he rounded up or rounded down. We'll see. Because, what that was what I was talking about earlier, if, if I make the n smaller, then the width gets bigger. And he said he used the word at least, not at most. He, oh look, and even as a sentence, a common error will be 35. But the true answer is 34. I see, he is thinking ahead. Because making the end smaller makes the interval bigger. Because the end is in the denominator. Okay, can we do the last one, B6? That was embarrassing. Right. <coughs> um, Sophie, what's B6 about? Integration. Uh, integration. So what's the first thing? Or maybe, Grace, stop catching Pokemon. Give me your oh, exam. No. Exam. Okay. Yes. I will talk to them. The table below... Oh, baby question first. Right. X, 4 minus X squared. 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 4, 3, 0. And they want the missing numbers here. 4 minus 0 0.5 squared. 4 minus 0 0.5 squared is 15 over 4. 3.75. 4 minus 1.5 squared. 1.75. One mark for that. Now they want you to use the trapezium rule. Do you remember the trapezium rule? Of course you did. Your project was about it. Um, what is it? It's B... Hang on. It's something. It's something. Some... We have the first one plus the last one plus twice everything else. And then in the front there's a H over... H over 2. Yes. Do you remember how to get the H? The H is the B minus A divided by N. So the H would be 2 minus 0 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 0 0.4. So H over 2 is 0 0.2. First plus last plus twice everything else. Isn't it H is B minus A over N, I thought? Yeah, I think H is B minus A over N. It's the um, distance between each trapezoid. Here, maybe the picture will help. That's A, that's B, and you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The H is the distance between each trapezoid. Yeah. yeah. Answer four point two.
this isn't too too bad it's not great because the true answer I just checked on my calculator is 5.3 so not great but it's close it's 0.9 no it's 1.1 yeah, it's pretty bad actually I think it's because the end is only 5 you don't need to do that I just wanted to know ok next yes This is the next one. What's wrong? Okay. You got it? You need to write it down? I'll leave it there a second. Continue? You can talk to Marcelo. Marcelo? Marcelo. Great. I, can't talk to him. I will. I look forward to it. Okay. C B part 1. I use a table for integration by parts. What does Joan use? U and V? So she uses U and DU DX or U dash? Okay, U. Okay. U du dx v db dx What's the question? It, this is it here calculate this <coughs> so u is this part and db dx is the next part okay so if u is x what's the u dx? 1, One. and if db dx is cos x what's v? Just sign it. Yeah. And the formula, it's in the formula book, it's UV minus <coughs> integrate. V minus DUDX. I mean V DUDX. V DUDX. DUDX. Yeah. DX. So that would equal UV minus integrate V and DUDX is. 1, so it's just this. So this is the answer. x sine x plus cos x plus c. Continue. <coughs> right. So the next part is, what's this type of problem called? dy dx equals xy cos x. Which part? This is b part 2. Oh. Maybe you did it with Stephen last week. What's yes. it uh, called? Starts with an I. Starts with an O. Uh, ODE. ODEs. Mm. Yeah. So we have 1 over y dy equals x cos x dx yes? great what's wrong? who are you talking to? okay 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 is this part okay? Yeah. are you sure? is it okay? everybody else? okay what do I do next? I integrate, integrate, integrate. Now, what do I get on the left? Likewise. And what I get on the right is the answer to the last part, because in the last part they asked me to calculate that. See, look. Yes, yes, yes. So I get x sine x plus cos x plus c. They give me a point. They say 0, 1, so if I put that in, I get 1 equals 0 plus 1 plus c, so c equals 0. So I get log y equals x sine x plus cos x. So my answer is y equals e x sine x plus cos x.
Yeah. Doesn't the cost act have to be down in OE? No. E everything. Doesn't it become um, Y equals E? Uh, no, everything. E power everything, E power everything. Go down? Yes? Going down. Right, next part. They say, calculate the derivative of cotan. See part one. So, does anyone, if you don't remember what cotan is, they tell you what cotan is. No, they say to use cos x over sin x. So I can use what rule here? The quotient rule. Yeah, bottom squared. Bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom. So we get minus sine squared x plus cos squared x over sine squared x which is minus 1 over sine squared x which is minus cosec squared x ok so that's finished part 2 is they want you to calculate the volume so the formula for volume is pi and here they say pi over 6 pi over 4 and then we have our function squared dx and they want us to use cosec so this equals pi pi over 6 pi over 4 cosec squared dx now you're supposed to use your answer from the last part <coughs> So, sorry, no, wait. so if you look here, what's the derivative of cotan? It's minus cosec squared. So let me just write that on the side. Cotan x, its derivative is minus cosec squared x. Make sense? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. How do, how do I get this? I use the quotient rule. You know the wow. yeah. Right. So what is the derivative of minus cotan? Its derivative would be cosec squared x. That makes sense. Does it? So if the derivative of cotan is cosec, that means the antiderivative of cosec is minus cotan. That's the antiderivative going backwards. In other words, I can say to integrate cosec squared x, the answer is minus cotan x. Using my last answer backwards. Yeah. So now down here, this will equal minus pi cotan x pi over six pi over four. So you don't have to include the pi inside. No, you don't. You're right. You don't. Here you go. Last part. Here you go. Great. That was part two. Okay. Last part, part three. They want the derivative of cotan x power six. 
Yeah, like this, yeah? Oh, this is the same as cotan 6x, yeah. What rule do I need here? Yeah, yeah, I could change cotan to uh, tan. 1 over tan x power <coughs> 6. I don't have to do that, though. What rule do I need? No, chain rule. So you bring down the power, differentiate the inside bracket, bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, and then multiply by the inside derivative. What's the derivative of cotan? Well, that's what they often do at the start. The derivative of cotan is minus cosec squared. So multiply by minus cosec squared x, and that's the answer. Do they ask me to simplify, Sophie? No. no? Perfect. Um, so wait, before I go, let's just recap what you've done. So you've done, let me just stop this.